Good morning, everyone. As always, place the cross on first, no matter what's going on in your life. Keep your cross on. You know, you can read all through the books of Thessalonians, Colossians. They tell you how to walk and how to act and how to behave. What not to do, what to do. Am I saying you're going to get it right right away? No, it takes time. It takes patience. It takes a lot of things. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today I'm going to read from 1 Thessalonians. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus, unto the church of the Thessalonians, and God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren. And it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other are boundeth. So he's seeing that they doing better. That's the church of Thessalonica. So that we ourselves glory in you in the church of God, of your patience and faith and all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. Now look what goes with it. With your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulation that you endure. Wow. Which is manifest token of the righteous judgment of God. What is a, what's a manifest, what's a token? What's the show that you working for God and living for God? Persecution and tribulation. That you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. So don't worry. God, vengeance belongs to God. He said God will recompense. You don't have to repay your enemy for what they do to you. You don't. Just keep doing what you're supposed to do as a, as a fellow Christian, a follower of Christ. And whoever wronged you, it's going to come up on their own heads. And to who you are troubled, rest with us. With, when the Lord shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels and flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. What did he say? Vengeance on who? Them that know not God and obey not the gospel who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe. Because of our testimony among you was believed in that day. Wherefore also we pray always for you. That our God will count you worthy of this calling. And fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness. And the work of faith with power. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you. And in you in him. According to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we beseech you brethren. By the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And by our gathering together to you. To him. That you be not soon shaken. In mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So you know Jesus ain't returning until certain things come to pass. But what he's telling you, endure. What he's telling you to do? Rejoice. What are you telling you to do? Keep walking worthily. The fact that you're suffering and going through things and having tribulations is the fact that you're living for God. If you're not, that means you're living for the world. Think about it. A lot of people don't understand that. The righteous will suffer. But he said, don't worry. Who opposes the, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. You know they already, the Pope last week made a one world religion. You know that, right? So that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know that withhold of that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now let of will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. So when will all 
works of evil be destroyed? When Jesus returns. When will we gather to him? When Jesus returns. So all this, you going to heaven right after you die? Scratch that out. He's going to do that. Everything going to happen at the same time. All the works of darkness going to be destroyed at the same time. And all the people who live right according to how God wants you to live and gave their life over to him, they're going to be saved at the same time. Does it make sense? It's going to be all in one. Even him who's coming is after the working of Satan. With all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivingness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Because they receive not the love of the truth. What's the truth? The gospel. That they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion. That they shall believe a lie. So when it gets to a point. It's going to be a point of no return for all the people that don't want to live right according to God. He said he's going to let them believe the evil one. He's going to let them be tricked. You remember in um, the book of Moses, I mean the book, I mean Exodus. When Pharaoh, right? When Pharaoh wouldn't let the people go and God just made sure he hardened his heart. So he can do what he was going to do in regards to Pharaoh. That's basically what he's going to do to all the people who didn't believe beforehand. He's going to give them, let them believe what they want so he can destroy them. That sounds very harsh for God. But the thing is, God's like, I gave you chances. Now it's too late. And in, in, in Revelation, he said, them who are wicked, let them be wicked still. Let them be evil still. And those who are righteous, let them be righteous still. Let them do what they do. You understand? Because in the end, I got the final say. That's what Christ is telling you. And this, for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Wow. The kingdom of heaven at hand? You know, once eventually you start doing evil things, God just lets you. He don't force you to make changes. It's up to you. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief on the truth. That God lines over what Jesus said. God told you from the beginning. Right? He said, who, who mind is Satan can't take them from my hands. The ones who are his, Satan cannot take. He cannot trick the chosen. Whereunto well, he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the tradition which you have been taught, whether by word or epistle. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which have loved us and have given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts, establish you in every good work, word and work. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course. And be glorified even as it with you. And that we may be delivered from the unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not faith. What? But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. But he said, he said, don't take them out of the world. That was Jesus. Said, don't take them out of the world. Keep them now. But I ask you to just keep them from the evil in the world. That's what he said. That's what Jesus said. So you're going to be protected. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you, that you both do and will do the things which we command you. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walk of disorderly and not after the tradition which we have we received of us. Why do you need to follow after the disciples? Because they follow the traditions of Jesus Christ. There are some traditions God wants you to hold true to. You. Some traditions like the traditions inherited from your fathers and your mothers, a lot of them he wants you to do away with. That's why you become a new creation. You're born again. To what? Walk worthily. Makes sense, right? For you yourself know you ought to follow us, for we be behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might be chargeable to anyone. Now because we have not power but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. For even we... 
when we were with you, this we commanded you that if any man would not work, mighty city eat. Now think in regards to work. You got physical work that you do to provide for your household and stuff like that. Then you got work for God. And every man not work, not eat. I'm telling you this because there were times in my life when God was growing me. And probably times in your life when God was growing you. And you still ate. And you still, you didn't have a physical job. You're probably just growing spiritually. That's work too. That's another thing that keeps you fed. Man said not live by bread alone, but every word but proceeded out the mouth of God. So part of your work is spreading the gospel. That keeps you fed too. It keeps other people fed. But he said, for we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. That's all they doing. Busybodies. Think about the work he's talking about. Working not at all. That's one thing about when you don't have a physical job to go to. All they want to do is run around and rip and run and stand on the street corners and talk, gossip and gossip and know everything they go. News Channel 5. That's what happens when you ain't got nothing to do with your time. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. But ye brother be not weary in well doing. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. That means distance yourself from these people. Right? But watch what he says. Yet count him not as an enemy, but I admonish him as a brother. What he said, keep not company with him so he'll be ashamed. Maybe he'll see, maybe he'll wake up and be like, wait, but I, might, I might need to start working too. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you all. The salutation of power with my own hand, which is the token in every epistle, so I write. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And all things do what? To the honor of Jesus Christ and give thanks to him. That's why he always ended a lot of his epistles, a lot of his words with Christ but he told you a lot of things right there you see a lot of people don't read their Bible so don't really know how it works you know every word word in this Bible is confirmed by another word it's like the Bible is a, a total confirmation from beginning to end it's all about confirmation you see he said don't bring up a rally or accusation against someone without two or three witnesses you know what I'm saying even if that means even if your eyes see something Somebody else got to see it too. <laughs> Do you understand, people? You know why this will help you? Because sometimes your eyes can deceive you. Why am I talking about this? But sometimes your eyes can deceive you, people. You see, a lot of people see things. The Bible says this. You need two or three, even with prophecy. Or when somebody speaks in tongues, it's got to be somebody else there to interpret. Why does he do this? Confirmation. Confirmation. I told you the story. Of Peter, right? Kill and eat, Peter. Lord, you know that I have never eaten anything under fire my whole life. He said, what I call unclean, I mean clean, don't call uncommon. Whatever I clean is clean. So guess what? Along come Paul, right? Getting told the exact same thing. God always confirms everything that is true. That's why he said, all things that are right and true, meditate on these things. Think on these things. Don't let your flesh cause your mouth to sin. You understand? You see, a lot of people bring up things that spread. He said, they are busybodies, slow bellies. You understand? But I've just broke it down to you. The Bible just broke it down to you. And he said, obey the words of this gospel. Right? So this is some words you need to obey as a follower of Christ. It is what it is. You understand? But he said, don't worry about it. All the suffering, he said, God's going to repent, recompense everybody that trouble you. Now, I'm not going to add to the word, but I'm going to tell you what Jesus said. If you don't believe that Christ is Lord, I tell you right now, you will die in your sins. So what's the solution for everybody that trouble you? That's why he said, just don't keep coming with him. A man is a brother, right? So you'll be saying, maybe he'll repent and get it right. Same with people in your life. Don't keep coming with him. Maybe they'll repent. Maybe like, wow, why, why this happening? You understand? One thing you're going to realize, people, the righteous suffer. And guess what? Guess who else suffer? The evil suffer too. But Paul said, 
If you're going to suffer, suffer not as a busybody, but suffer as a Christian. Suffer as a follower of Christ. So one thing about it, you're going to know the thing about this world. There are people going through suffering in this world because of evil. Some people are going through suffering in this world because they live for Christ. Do you understand? And you got to use discernment in regards to the two. You know, there's a lot of people that are going through things in this world. Not because they live for Christ. Because they don't. It's simple. But the thing is, like he said, the, the day of the Lord is at The kingdom is at hand. Well, I, t I tell people this. This is my interpretation of this. And I think it's a true interpretation. You see, you never know when your last day is coming. When your last day upon this earth comes, if God decides to take you out through COVID-19, a car wreck, drowning, whatever way he decides to take you, the next day you're going to have after that is the day of the Lord. That's it. You're going to be resting. And the next time you wake up, it's going to be judgment day for you. So think about it. The lifespan for every human being can be from one year old to 120. You can reach 120 years old according to the word of God. You understand? So think about this. And this is the world you live in. You got most likely, probably, if you're lucky, if you're blessed, you got 120 years to get it right. That's it. You don't get no longer than that. We ain't vampires. For as this flesh, this flesh does not have eternal life. It doesn't. So you're going to leave this place one day or the other. So when you're telling people the kingdom of heaven is at hand, you say, hey, get right now. The coming of the Lord, think about this how I look at things. You know, maybe this is people's interpretation. When you die, you go straight to heaven. Because still, you have no concept of time. You just rest and then you wake up and judgment day is upon you. That's it. And what's going to happen with doing judgment day? All the works of uh, evil are going to be destroyed. And all the works of righteousness are going to be rewarded. It's simple. That's why he said don't take vengeance in your own hand. I got this. I got everything. Suffer for me. Live for me. And if you live with me now... You're going to live with me then. If you deny me now, I'm going to deny you then. If you don't live according to the words that I command you and doing things that pleases me, you might end up in a place where all the non-believers and hypocrites and all those people are going to end up. I just gave you some words in regards to who won't inherit the kingdom of God. Liars are going to be there too. Most people are like, yeah, you know, they just, just murderers. Yeah, murder is a sin, lie is a sin, just like murder. You understand? But he said, endure. That means don't let nothing change you from the steadfast growth that you're headed on. Don't let the world change you. Don't let tribulation change you. Don't go backwards, go forwards. That means endure the suffering. Endure sound doctrine. Be careful who you listen to. Like he said, some people he's going to give strong delusions that they will believe a lie. Be careful who you listen to in this deceitful world. Be careful who you follow. Some people don't follow the ways of Christ. They don't. I'm going to say this line I keep saying lately. I tell you now weeping that they are enemies of the cross. Why? Why are they enemies of the cross? Because they're not doing the things that's pleasing to the Lord. A lot of people do things that's pleasing to themselves. Now, I ain't telling you it's, it's an easy thing to figure out. When God said you would know them by their fruits, it's a lot of fruits you got to get to know people by. Right now, he told you a little fruit about people who don't want to work. Now, I told you, I, always, I ain't adding to the word. But working as a follower of Christ involves two jobs. First of all, from the beginning, once Adam ate from the tree, he was punished with a curse. What was the curse? He said, by the sweat of your brow, you will eat bread. So you got to work every day of your life as a man. I done went through times in my life when I didn't want to work. I've been there, done that, but you got to wake up away from that slumber. God doesn't want you begging. He does not want you begging people. He wants you to be the giver. You know that, right? 
So if do, God do bless you materialistically, it's to bless others. And if he do bless you with more spiritual gifts, it's to give those same spiritual gifts to other people who can receive it. Because he said, all have not faith. Right? Let me pause for a second and we'll continue. 